Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well and welcome to the June GFM talk session. The purpose of GFM talks is to welcome colleagues from across the GFM and our local area to share their practice, experience and thoughts within an educational context. The GFM recognise the importance of sharing and we value learning from one another to change attitudes, develop our outlook, to enable us to best serve those within our community. And our agenda here at GFM Talks is to create a safe forum in which we can share, learn and speak debate and or conversation. The GFM is very grateful to Helen Spencer, who is speaking at this afternoon's GFM Talks. Helen is the Local Heritage Education Manager for London and the South East region for Historic England. And in this GFM Talk, Helen is going to share details of some of the wonderful heritage sites from across Gosport and how Heritage England are working in the town to help develop the area through its historic environment. I'm now going to hand over to Tom Morgan for a bit more of a detailed introduction to Helen and her work with the GFM. Thanks very much, Tom. Good afternoon. We've been lucky enough to secure the expertise of Helen Spencer from Historic England. Gosport is second only to London in its density of historic sites and is therefore of great historical importance. Helen has been working with the GFM for a couple of years on a number of local history projects, most notably the Browndown Trenches and the Stokes Bay Heritage Zone. The aim of the video today is to highlight Gosport's historical sites and emphasise the importance of looking after them for future generations. This is particularly poignant this summer, with lockdown hopefully ending soon. Many people will be out and about in the local area, which provides a great opportunity to see more, but also puts pressure on the delicate nature of historical sites. Hello. My name is Helen Spencer and I work for an organisation called Historic England. In this presentation, I'm going to show you some of the wonderful heritage sites across Gosport and talk to you a little bit about how Historic England is working in Gosport to help um, develop the area through its historic environment. So first of all, I want to just to explain quickly who Historic England is um, and we're a public body, so we're for everybody and we look after the historic environment of England. So we champion every place that has a rich history or cultural significance so that people across England and visitors to the country can enjoy and understand them. One of the things we're most well known for is the National Heritage List for England, which Historic England manages. And this is a special list of all the really, really significant sites across the country. And this includes anything from monuments to um, palaces, to shipwrecks, to cemeteries. So as I mentioned, we manage the National Heritage List and Locally, you can find out whether you live next to a listed site by going onto our website and doing a map search. So it's very easy to find out if when you want to go out and about and look at heritage in your area to find out exactly where it is. So I've put in the postcode for Broom Park, as you can see, and it's come up with some blue triangles and some red shaded areas. So the blue triangles are all the listed buildings. And on our website, if you click on that, it'll give you more details about what they are. And the red shaded areas, the forts, for example, that you can see are the scheduled monuments. So I'm sure you're familiar with some of these sites, but some of them you might not be quite so aware of. So it's always worth having a look so that you can find out where to go and see your local heritage. So this is the, uh, the postcode for Bay House School. And you can see obviously um, a little bit different part of Gosport there and a green shaded area that comes up. And those are parks and cemeteries. So Gosport has pretty much got it all and you can see it's absolutely jam packed with listed buildings. So it's really, really a great place for exploring your heritage. Just as an aside, some of you might not know that Bay House School itself is on the National Heritage List for England. So it's considered to be a really important historical site. And obviously you can find out more by going onto our website. Now, there isn't a lot of information about Bay House School on that website. So one of the things we're hoping to do um, over the next year or so is to 
do what we call enrich the list, that is to add photographs and your thoughts and research into the history of Bay House School. So what are we actually doing in Gosport as Historic England? So, so Historic England has a programme called the Heritage Action Zone programme and Gosport is part of that programme which aims to use the historic environment as a catalyst for economic growth. As I'm sure you know, Gosport has a really unique military history and there are numerous sites of national significance as we've just seen by looking at the maps. And it has its own um, Heritage Action Zone manager at Gosport Borough Council, Michelle Lees, who hopefully you'll come across um, in the course of the year while we're working um, with you as part of the Heritage Action Zone programme. So one of the things that the council and the Heritage Action Zone team want to achieve is to enhance Gosport's and heritage, Gosport's heritage rather, through um, making people aware of it by bringing back into use empty buildings so that it can create um, housing and employment and also trying to get more people coming into the area, whether it's to invest or to visit as tourists. Um, and for you as residents of Gosport to get an improved um, quality of life through the opportunities that, um, that engaging with heritage can bring you in terms of your health and well-being. So lots of the work we've done so far has been about research and about surveys, um, including some archaeological fieldwork and drone photography. And we've got a research document that, that those of you that want to explore a little bit more can have a look at on our website. Unfortunately, as across the country, there are some sites which are neglected and in danger of falling to bits. Um, and these come onto our Heritage at Risk register. Some of those sites include ones that you might know, such as the Derby Museum or Number Two Battery, Forts Elson and Gill Kicker, um, they, the fortifications south of Trinity Church, um, and some of the other um, defences and military buildings around um, the Hasler site and, and Priddy's Yard. So again, we've got research information about that. If you want to find out more about those areas that are in danger in Gosport, then you can have a look on our website. So one of the key areas that I think you'll know is the Motton Bailey Castle near Apple Dumpling Bridge. And here you can see um, a couple of our archaeological investigators, Olaf in the, in the front of that um, photograph there, who's our key archaeologist um, for Gosport. And some of you have met him already and hopefully more of you will get to meet him as uh, time goes on. But we know now the, the rough date of the Motten Bailey Castle and its historical significance in terms of the Norman Conquest and for the development of, of medieval manors um, and the Manor of Rauner. So again, if you want to explore more and read about our research on the Modern Mailey Castle, then we've got a research paper that you can have a look at. Um, Olaf has done a, a lovely drawing of the site, um, which gives you an idea of its location and its significance. You can also spot maybe a, a World War II pillbox. But um, one of the things that um, may account for where the Modern Bailey is located is because we know obviously that the River Alva as time went on, was um, directed into a different course. So it might have been um, put there as a, a point to guard the River Alva. Um, and one of the things that we're asking you, well, I'll be asking you throughout this little presentation, is what do you think the main risks are to a site like this? There are similar sites, earthworks and mounds and lumps and bumps across Gosport. Um, and I'd like you to think about, you know, what problems might we have in conserving um, a site, a heritage site like that? So talking of conservation, Gosport has a massive number of conservation areas, 17, which again shows you how significant the heritage is. And this might mean that there are some listed buildings, but it means that these areas have special character and together they form a really important um, historic site. Now, some of those are also on our at-risk register, including, um, including the High Street. So I could ask you now to just maybe think for a moment, why do you think that some of these um, areas are at risk? And what do you think you could do to help? So just think about that for a moment. You can go onto the Gosport Borough Council website and it will tell you all about the different conservation areas and about why they're special and what we need to do to, to care for them. 
So what we're doing for Gosport is we brought Gosport into what we're calling our High Street Heritage Action Zone programme. Um, and as you know from various news reports during the pandemic, lots and lots of shops and businesses have closed down um, due to obviously the economic problems that have come with the pandemic. So one of the issues that we're trying to address is empty buildings on high streets and what we're doing is trying to work with the local community to bring those back into use maybe as independent shops or community spaces. Um, so we've got a three-year programme that will be happening in Gosport. We want the schools to be involved in that so there'll be lots of cultural events um, and arts and performing opportunities for you so do watch this space. A lot of the focus over the next year will be on the renovation of the um, the old grammar school or the Gosport Museum and Art Gallery site on the high street. So again, we're hoping to be able to involve you in that and, and to talk to you about what we're doing and get your ideas about the high street in general and what you think we could do um, to, to bring the high street back into, um, into, into public use and, and make it an exciting place for you to go. So talking about working with you, we've already worked with a group of students um, on the Brown Down First World War practice trenches. Um, but unfortunately, this project was disrupted heavily by the pandemic. So we're going to revisit that project later, later this year um, so that we can develop some resources from that. Um, but here's Olaf again talking to, uh, to a group of students from Broome Park that visited the site um, over a year ago now. And um, here you can see them on the site looking at the trenches and what we've discovered through the research is a clear um, set of opposing frontline trenches with the support and communication trenches between them. Um, unfortunately, obviously, this has been overlaid by uh, more recent um, activity. Obviously, there was some Second World War activity um, and MOD activity on there as well. Um, but also there's public activity, which um, which we have to identify um, and, and rule out, if you like, in terms of, of, of what the story of the um, of the earthworks are actually telling us. So, as I, as I mentioned, this is an ongoing project and we'll be um, we'll be working more with you um, over the coming year on the Brown Down site and trying to develop some resources um, around that. And I know some of you in year seven have done um, a pilot project on um, Brown Down, but we'll be adding hopefully a little bit more of the research information about which regiments um, were on the site and and how and and why they use this particular site. But again, looking at the, the picture of Olaf and, and, and the pupils, think about the risks to a site like this and how, um, as a community, you can help um, make sure that this site is, is preserved for the future. So have a look at these two images. If you didn't have the captions, and you showed them maybe to um, to your family or a neighbour, do you think they would know where they are and what they are? So one of the difficulties we have is that a lot of the really important heritage sites um, across Gosport are not very visible to, to the, the public um, and, and just by looking at them, you wouldn't necessarily know what they are. So one of the things we're doing in Stokes Bay is assessing the area to see whether it meets um, the requirements to become a, cons a conservation area. And lots of you um, have got involved in our survey, which is brilliant. Um, and, but we're going to be working with the, with the some year eights in the summer term to explore the natural and the historic environment of Stokes Bay. Um, and that's going to lead to some, some artwork and an exhibition. Um, so do watch out for that because there's going to be a lot more coming on Stokes Bay. But again, think about the risks to a site like this, which has you know brilliant 19th century and 20th century history in the ground um, and what we might do to, um, to help and protect it. So, as I said, one of the issues that we have is that some of the sites around the area are just lumps in the ground. And these lumps in the ground are great um, spaces to explore. 
um, and we wouldn't want to put people off exploring these spaces, but we just need you to be aware of the risk to the archaeology. Um, so what's in the ground um, and what that represents by um, human activity. So there's general wear and tear during the pandemic last summer, lots of people went out and about to um, well-known beauty spots across the country and just the sheer numbers of people visiting those sites was causing um, environmental damage and damage to um, the historic environment as well. So you have to be careful about that. But obviously there's more significant damage that can be caused by, by vehicles, for example, off-road vehicles um, using um, forts and various other sites um, for, for off-roading, but also um, mountain biking and BMX tracks. You know, if you develop these in and on um, historic sites, that damage is permanent. And we're talking, obviously, in the case of a, an INH hill fort, we're talking about thousands of years. You know, um, if we're talking about uh, the Motten Bailey Castle, you know, we're talking about a thousand years of history that could be um, could be destroyed if um, if this sort of activity is carried out there. Other problems that you have um, is fire damage again, which um, you know might apply to a site like uh, like Brown Down. And obviously, if you're digging in the ground or you're doing um, you know using metal detectors to to try to find. Um, Find, your, find a local hoard, then, um, then all of those things can cause irreparable damage to historic sites. So in terms of buildings, again, um, I've deliberately chosen, as you can see, sites that are not in Gosport, um, because I'm sure that you know there are sites in Gosport where damage has happened and is happening. Um, and I think it's for you to sort of think about that um, and identify those sites um, and maybe take a step back and think about how we should look after them and what we can do together to ensure that we um, we protect them. So buildings, obviously they're at risk from uh, graffiti. In some cases, graffiti, particularly on old buildings, just will not come off um, and will damage the building by the chemicals that we need to remove it. Um, obviously, vandalism and theft um, can can cause all sorts of problems too. Mainly though buildings are at risk from water damage and fire damage and some of that obviously is accidental. Um, old buildings are sometimes tinder boxes. Um, so those are things that we need to to look out for. But bearing in mind you know when things are old they often don't need a lot of effort um, for them to to fall to bits. So we've got to be particularly um, careful around old places. So just to emphasise the sort of serious side of this, we want, really, really want you to go out and enjoy your local heritage. It's just such a wonderful asset that you've got all across the area. But you do need to be mindful of the fact that damage to heritage sites, the, one, the types of sites that I've mentioned, and also those that are undesignated, so they might not be on our list, but we know obviously through the research and published information such as Brown Down, for example, we know these sites are of national historical importance and any damage to those sites is actually considered to be a heritage crime. So obviously we don't want you to um, unwittingly um, fall into that um, category of, of, of heritage crime. So please um, do be really, really careful. It's important for us that you enjoy these sites um, and you visit them carefully. But obviously sites like Browndown, for example, is on um, Ministry of Defence land anyway, so it's private land. So you are again putting yourself at risk by going onto private land. Areas that are fenced off, for example, like Fort Gilkicker, um, again, you know, it's it's Fenced off for a reason. It's it's private. Obviously, it's been um, it's been sold by the Ministry of Defence for development purposes. But it is in a dangerous state, and it could cause you harm if you go there. So it's really important for us that you enjoy your local heritage safely. So that's that's kind of my public service announcement. Um, before sort of moving on to just talk about some of the projects that we're going to be doing with you. So what can you do to help? So have a look at your at your local authority website. Find out whether you're living in a conservation area. There are so many of them um, across Gosport. You may well live in one and you just don't know. 
you might visit them regularly because being sites of special interest, they're nice places to be. And so that might be a place you visit. So if you do visit or um, you live in one of these areas or near any of those buildings or scheduled monuments that I mentioned at the beginning, what I would ask you to do is to be aware. So look up the places that you're going and find out about them. So do a little bit of research before you go. Make sure that you are staying safe where you go. So don't go anywhere that might be dangerous and tread lightly and leave no trace. Many thanks again to Helen for this afternoon's really interesting talks on some of the wonderful heritage sites that we have across the town of Gosport. Should you wish to submit any questions following tonight's talk, please complete the question submission Google form, which you can find within the email that was sent out from Megan Webb with all the details of this afternoon's talk. Any questions that are submitted will be shared with either Tom or Helen to answer. Should you wish to present at a future GFM Talks, please send your details, the title of your talk and a brief outline of the content of your talk to talks at gfmap.org. Megan Webb will be in touch should, should she require any more details. Colleagues have the option of presenting a short talk for no longer than 20 minutes or time can be allocated for colleagues wishing to present a longer talk. So all that's left for me to say is I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Many thanks again to Helen for this afternoon's talk. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.